I'm going to read just a little section of Will Bonzel's Essential Guide to Radical Self-Reliant Gardening. It's a great book. I uh, have been slowly reading through this book, but I really like Will Bonzel and his perspective on gardening and growing food and, uh, and his techniques for saving seeds. Uh, but when reading through this book, I just came across the section about uh, growing permacrops and specifically uh, acorns. Because here in Florida, we have lots of oak trees, lots of acorns. And I was aware that they had been used, some people use them to make flour, um, which is just interesting, I'd like to try, but uh, I wanted to read this little section that he wrote. Uh, it's called Acorns for Civilization's Sake. There is something very important we can do to improve the usefulness of acorns, indeed to make them a domesticated crop. We can improve them by selection, not we as in you and I, but we as in civilization as a whole. None of us will live to accomplish much, but we can make a beginning. There are at least two things we can be selecting for right off. Low tannin seems like the obvious one, yet it may be the least important one, since whatever we do, we will still have to leach the acorns anyway. Perhaps more important is to select for large and consistent yield. When collecting wild acorns from the same trees year after year, we will notice certain individuals will consistently better yields than their neighbors. We should select seed from those acorns to plant in our own groves and in turn select and reselect from those trees as they come into bearing. Who wants to wait 20 years to see the first crop? You may only live to select one or two generations, but that will create a base on which others can build. Of course, this assumes someone else will be interested in following up, and I opt absolutely do assume that. A garden without borders is also a garden without calendars. It sees not only beyond this immediate place, but also beyond this immediate time. Look beyond the current season, the centuries, and millennia to come. Are our gardens merely something to occupy the spaces until they get paved, or are they the beginning of a sustainable future? One with room for snail darters and spotted owls.